Hey friends, welcome back to another video. So today I've decided I'm going to test out a few different stains. So stains are basically like colours that you can add to clay. I'm going to be using porcelain, so I use Audrey Blackman porcelain and I'm going to be adding lots of different colours and trying to work out which colours I want to use in the future. I've probably posted a few videos of just um, plain porcelain and I thought it'd be fun to add some colours into the mix. So I've got quite a lot of colours to test, about 20, um, and they're all from Scarva, which is a pottery supply store in the UK. And yeah, I'm going to get to it. So I thought I'd add 10% stain, which is what they recommend to the porcelain, fire that so we can see the colour. And then I'm also going to add some of that stain to the white porcelain and hopefully it will ripple through when I throw it on the wheel. Um, and yeah, it's kind of like a raspberry ripple kind of vibe. So um, yeah, let's have a look. So here are all the stains. So I have a mix of these um, kind of this nano colour stain and your normal kind of, I think these are more widely available, the mason stains. Um, so yeah, I'll leave them all listed down below and um, what I'm going to do, this is my little notebook, <laughs> 10 grams in 90 grams of porcelain, so that's going to be about 10%. And then I'm going to fire that, so 50 grams of that I'm going to take to fire and then 50 grams I'm going to add to porcelain. So I'm going to just stick it on top to see if I can get more of an ombre kind of effect. Throw my cup, so this is um, actually testers for cup container, um, sorry, this is actually testers for candle containers. So that's why I'm going to throw some candle holders. This is just the dimensions. And now I'm going to start listing what I do. So I'm going to do a number and then the stain name. And what I've done, so I don't get them mixed up, I've just written on this board some numbers so I can like put them in their spots. Um, and then when I come to throw, I'll just take the clay from that spot. So I'm hoping I don't get mixed up because even though it should be obvious because they're all different colors, I have some that are quite similar. So yeah, I'm gonna go and do that now. So I'll show you me wedging the stain in. So I've set out all the stains on the boards and I've started throwing some. So the first one was a little bit of a failure. <laughs> the stain I put on top so of course it just went on the inside <laughs> um, which is kind of cute actually if you just want to have like a pop of colour on the inside so for the second one I changed where I placed the stain blob I did it on the side so it would then kind of go in these swirls down the side which I quite love that one yeah so for the next one I'm doing this thistle which I don't know what color I guess it's like a green so I've got my scales I'm going to weigh out 90 grams of the porcelain so yeah that's 90 grams of the porcelain 10 grams of the stain nearly there there we go this bit is really messy <laughs> yeah obviously the thistle is purple not green <laughs> make the clay kind of Flat, so I can just pour the stain in the middle it still kind of goes everywhere but this is kind of the best way of trying to kind of make it stay inside the clay so then I'm just gonna put a little pocket around it it's still gonna kind of burst and go everywhere but just for the first bit at least it's in the clay so I'm first actually just gonna mark um, number three on the box just so I know what color I'm just gonna stamp the number on the clay so so I've just put it on there as well and now I'm just gonna start to squish the clay and the the powder does so the stain does dry the clay out so sometimes I just add a bit of water um, but yeah it's still yeah so you can see it kind of bursting so I'm just gonna try the best I can to keep that within the clay it's probably best actually to use gloves while you're doing this just so that if there's anything toxic in the stain it doesn't go in, into your hands just kind of i found rolling the sausage helped just to get it all into the clay <laughs> so now it's kind of drying out a little bit so i probably will add a little bit of water just kind of spraying some on the clay just so it doesn't dry out too much and then again just rolling because it's such a small amount to wedge i've actually found rolling it into the stain to be much easier sorry the camera is a bit on the surface so sorry if it's jogging 
So I'm just going to work this a bit more and I'll clip to once it's all mixed in. So now that's all mixed in, I'm going to split it in half. So take 50 grams and start to roll that into just a pebble. I just want to see the, what the solid colour's like. So just into a bit of a ball, something like that, and I'll fire that. And I'm just going to stamp a number, number three on it, because that's number three in my notes, so I know what stain it is. So there's a three in there, you can kind of see. And I've got, started making the pebbles there. So I'm just going to, so I've just popped that next to it. So those are the pebbles starting. Um, and I'm going to fire those and probably just glaze half so I can see it with and without glaze. So this is 450 grams of clay and I'm going to just plop this on the side, kind of on the side at the top. I found when I put it right on the top, when I coned it up and coned it down, opened it out, I just pushed all that clay inside. So now I'm just going to have it kind of on the outside edge. So I'm hoping this, I did a bit of a test with that coloured, that kind of, um, it's called burnt sienna is the name of the stain, but it's like a brownie colour and it worked much better. So now it's kind of on the side, but at the top. So when I had it really at the top, it all went inside. So that's not what I want. So yeah, so let's see how well this throws. Just kind of tapping it in just so it's nicely attached. And now let's have a go. So I'm just going to throw it now on the wheel. I might skip through this part just so that it's a bit faster and I've shown kind of how I throw a porcelain before. Um, yeah, my wheel is actually on its like lowest position just because I've been teaching a lot of classes and I do that when it's, it's like in the sitting position. So just in case you're like, oh, I thought she threw standing up. Um, it's just for these testers, I couldn't be bothered to put the wheel up and down again. I know I'm not really going to be throwing for very long, so this is fine just for a little bit. So I'm just going to wet the board, attach the clay. So that's the finished piece. I think I would have actually liked it to be come down a bit further into the piece. So I think I might just put it more on the side next time. I quite like how this one has come down further. So I think, yeah, I'm gonna put it more on the side closer to the bottom. But yeah, these are just kind of tests and I'm just happy to see that the kind of concept is working. Um, I'm really excited to see all the colours. So yeah, I'm going to get on and do all of these and I'll show you them all once they're finished. So I've been playing around with how to place the clay, like the coloured clay on the clay to give a few different effects. It is actually really hard to control. It kind of just does its own thing, but I'm really liking how they're looking. I still have these to do and then some pebbles there growing of the actual solid colour. So I think I'll probably come back once they've all been done and I'm starting to carve them. So it's the next day and all the candle holders with the coloured porcelain are thrown. And sorry, the lighting is a little bit stroby in here when the sun shines through. So ho hopefully it stops doing that. But yeah, I just wanted to show you the kind of variation you get with the coloured porcelain. I think they all look really cute. So now I'm just going to stamp them all. So I've marked a number which corresponds to the stain and I'm just going to stamp it on the side here so I don't get them all confused. So I'm just carving those uh, pots I threw with the coloured porcelain. Um, I'm doing some <laughs> for Christmas even though it's like the start of the year but I just wanted to see how they looked with the, some Christmas decorations. So I have some uh, fairy lights, it's, uh, a tree, 
so it's Christmas tree this one is holly then these are so this is a pomegranate this one's quite cute some fish in waves this one is meant to be like um, some flowers kind of like cow's parsley this is a ginger lily this is kind of more abstract just like a bit of a wavy design and then this is meant to be mistletoe so yeah i still got these to carve so i'm gonna do this one i'm gonna carve some leaves on this one which i'll show you so yeah this is how it looks before carving i really love this green stripy design so yeah i'm gonna add some leaves i'm gonna use some diamond core tools i'll leave these linked below um, this one is p1 which i think i'll probably use most of this so i do this carving with this tool um yeah so i'm gonna start by yeah doing some leaves first one i love how when you carve in the color kind of looks different in the carving so i kind of wanted these leaves to be a bit more kind of random so like they're floating in the breeze What I sometimes do is actually just draw a bit of a swirl just so that they can follow something. And they're not just like kind of a bit random in the, they kind of look like they're, this is the breeze and it's kind of following the breeze. So yeah, now I'm just gonna go ahead and just, I never really like look at anything when I carve. I like to be a bit more free with it. trying to place them all like different angles but sometimes just from like your what's easiest to carve sometimes they end up being one way but yeah I really like how that's looking so I'm just going to go ahead and finish this off and I'll show you once it's finished. So that's the finished design they kind of are going hopefully a bit wavy up and down so yeah that's that one finished I'm going to go ahead and finish these now so I'll show you them all once they're carved. So I'm back after unloading the kiln. Here are my cute porcelain babies behind me. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to show you the result after I fired them. So I can't remember exactly if I showed you each of the colors, but I'll definitely link them down below. Um, I used a mixture of, I think these Scarva stains and also the Mason stains. So yeah, I'll show you them all now. So I try to arrange them a little bit in some coordinated colour order. Don't hate me that I don't really know the colour order of a rainbow. But yeah, I kind of thought it was quite cute ombre little colours here. And then these guys didn't fit. So yeah, I think I'll probably go through them now. So I've just put them in, in the order of how I have them in my notes and I'm just gonna read out the stains that they are so you can get an idea of the colour it fires to. So this one I have is the raspberry stain. Sorry, it kind of went inside when I threw it with it. So yeah, I hope you can see it's this kind of pinky colour. This one is the burnt sienna stain. This one is thistle. Then this one is paprika. This one is Cactus Pacific. Sorry, I should probably put my, this one's Pacific. This one is Holly. This one is Spice. Midnight Blue. Poppy. Bermuda. Orchid. Dark Spruce. Uh, blackberry wine which came out quite a different colour to the um, how it's meant to look on the website it's meant to be like a purpley a dark purpley colour then this one here is pansy purple again came out a little bit different old gold peacock I love this one so deep pretty colour this one is pea green. This one I think is manganese aluminum pink. 
and then this one is a dusty lavender again came out quite different so i'll link the clear glaze i used down below it's called odyssey clear um so it might be something to do with what's in the glaze i haven't checked the recipe for a while that's kind of changing a lot of the purples um i fire in a electric kiln uh to about cone between cone six and seven so yeah the a lot of the purples basically came out much more muted and not really purpley in color but a lot of the other colors came out really true to the kind of example but yeah i'm really happy with them actually i think i'm definitely gonna keep this color i love this dusty kind of pink color this one would be cute for summer and then a lot of the christmasy colors so like the this kind of red and the green i'm definitely going to keep for my christmasy collections but yeah so that's it so um so yeah that's it i hope you found this helpful if you're trying some stains i would love to know kind of any tips you have for using stains or any stains you particularly love that really work well so i'm definitely going to be trying out some more stains i think i really love how it looks like swirled in the porcelain especially with the carvings going through so yeah i'm excited to try some more actually because a lot of these i don't really like stains they're a little bit too bright so i think what i'm going to try as well is adding a little bit of brown into some of the brighter colors to mute them down a bit brown or gray so yeah i'm gonna keep on this kind of experimental colour porcelain train. So yeah, I'm definitely going to keep doing a lot more of these. I have so many ideas of like what to make with these. I'm going to obviously make the candle holders, but yeah, I have a lot of um, different things in the range. So I might not have talked about it on here. A lot of my porcelain work is going into a kind of side shoot range from me called Glow, which is all focused around um, candles, but also like scented products. So uh, wax melts and little tea lights and hopefully in the future diffusers so I really also like capturing the look of the porcelain with um, products you can light so like candles kind of oil burners wax melters tea light holders that kind of thing so um, I'm really excited to start experimenting and developing that range uh, so yeah I'll probably link my web page about it down below if you're interested in having a little bit of a read about what we're excited to release and yeah i think the sense i'm working on will be released in may so i'm not sure when this video will go up i know that you guys know i'm quite bad at <laughs> uploading but this year i'm really trying to get better at it um and yeah i'm gonna be releasing a kind of holiday beachy kind of scent um which i'm kind of yeah for this kind of candle holder with these like little fishies which i'm excited for and then I'm also releasing this kind of scent that's more like muscly floral. It's going to be called Bohemia. It's like a, yeah, kind of like a laid back girly floral scent, but with um, kind of deep musty tones. So it's not like a fresh floral. And then the last one, yeah, the last one is Celestial. So I think we're going to use this colour, um, but with the celestial carving so like these stars and moons and this is a kind of sweet must scent which is um, a little bit fruity but yeah mainly musty sweet kind of scent it doesn't sound great but it's like a really nice scent it's kind of hard to describe but it's like one that kind of suits most um or most people like it's kind of yeah not overly floral not overly fruity or sweet it's just kind of like a nice background scent so yeah so anyway um thank you for coming along this journey with me and i expect to see more colored porcelain in the future okay bye